Welcome back. You came back. Yay. I'll try and make it short. Um, but our next uh, discussion in the uh, reliability of the Bible, whether it can be trusted at all, um, I'll, I'll call it the philosophical evidence. Um, and I haven't been taught this really, but I, I just think, I think it's right. Um, you could test it. The Bible says prove all things, like test all things. So I believe the Bible, um, I think part of this, I put this up front first because of a reason, but I also don't believe um, that you should just go by this alone. I think it's really good to study the hard evidence and see if there, you know, if there's really good reasons for faith and things like that. Um, but I think, I think, um, I, I think I'm okay and, and, and I feel good about this, uh, sitting on this, standing on it. I think it has some foundation and rock to it, solid, uh, solid thinking. Um, and that is, uh, I, I, I you, there's a prerequisite to the Bible and that's the existence of God. So I, I like to give you five and probably there's more I, over time. I'll get more. I'll think of some maybe right here. But I think, um, I think I would like to suggest everything that I do know about God, even without a Bible. And is that possible? Yeah. I believe there's a story, by the way, uh, that, um, of God, a guy finding God. Excuse me. He was an African, you know, tribesman. He was illiterate, you know, people would call him barbarian, savage, whatever, but he, you know, he lived, picture the stereotypical bush type guy, really cool guy, love this guy. <laughs> I think he went way beyond like a lot of professors and so-called scholars and all that. Like the wisdom of this guy is brilliant in my opinion. It's a true story, by the way. And he, he, uh, he was in his tribe and he started thinking. I love this, by the way, in Isaiah, I think it's chapter 44. Uh, it says, no one stops to think. And that's in relation to idolatry, by the way. But, and that's kind of like what happened with him. He looked at the, the gods that they had formed, probably, I think they had statues or they, you know, they're worshiping. And he said, wait, we're greater than that. We made that, you know, he just, it just bothered him. I think it's good to be bothered. I think it's good to ask questions. I think it's good to doubt. I think we should think. I believe in free thinking. I just, uh, and, and, and questioning and all that. I think people can lock themselves up to a corner where, they have to get it their way. It has to be satisfactory to them um, in the form that they want it. They become everything instead of, okay, maybe it's a different way, you know, break out, break out, free thinking, real free thinking. So this guy, he started, uh, he, uh, he's, he left his tribe for a while, he just decided to get away from them. By the way, I heard this from two different sources. I'm sorry, I don't know them. Um, Malcolm Smith is one guy I heard it from way back. He was a great teacher, I love him, Bible teacher. Then I can't remember another source. I said, oh my, that's the same source. It reminds me of the scriptures that say in Old Testament and New, uh, let every word be established with two, two or three witnesses and all. So that was kind of cool. But anyway, so this guy, um, he started thinking like, you know, I'm here and however I came to be must be powerful. It, however I came to be, I came from somewhere. I'm, you know, not just my mom and dad. How where they come from? He started, he started thinking this, it must be powerful. Um, I guess, I don't know why. I can't remember. I didn't, I don't remember that part, but maybe it was a volcano nearby or maybe he saw the tropical storms and thunder, lightning. Maybe it was um, uh, the elephant, the strength of the elephant, the panther. I don't know, but there was power. He saw power. Don't you see power in, in, our, in our universe and all? Of course, he didn't have telescopes and all that. But So then he said, um, let's see if I can remember the order of this. Um, he said, uh, wait, he said, this, this, it, now this is where the big step came in, uh, which I love. He said, this, it, must be a who because I'm a who and a who can't come from an it. <laughs> See, that's a step. There's a lot of people that don't want to take that. So he, he, he realized that, wow, I'm a who. So he realized this who is powerful. Then he realized this who in his thinking, at least based on what he thinks it is or who is, it reminds me of like, Dr. Seuss, who, you know, um, and not an it. So anyway, uh, he realized this who is a good who. 
because he had his needs being met. He had fruits and he had, he had water. And he realized needs are being met. So he didn't understand breath and all that, but he realized, wow, good, good, good. Then he realized, and he's, he's naming qualities and attributes of God that the Bible talks about and, and all that, but this is just nature itself, revealing God, revealing its author, the God of nature. Um, and it's his father, God, not mother, nature. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, so he, he, he realized this is a faithful good who, faithfulness, why? Because he's not only getting it one day, he keeps getting his needs met. So that went on, I don't know what else, that's all I found out. Now, later, five years later, I understand, there was a woman, I think it was a woman, I heard that from the second story, a missionary came to his, he went back to his tribe or whatever, and he came, a missionary was passing through, and they were, and that missionary was preaching and teaching about Jesus. And he said, aha, and then he found out who that who was, and he realized it fit everything he had gotten, and I don't know what else he got. He probably kept developing um, his inquiries deeper and deeper, and this is philosophy, and it's a good thing. It's reasonable, it's rational. He realized, wait, I'm uh, this good, faithful who, this is my guess, must be a moral faithful who because I'm moral. I know what's wrong and right, you know, and it's wrong for a tribes person to take the wife of another and, you know, adultery and everything else. So, you know, things that we know in our conscience and all that, everybody has that. You know, you don't need the Bible for that. Now, I love that the Bible actually puts it in a print you know, like the Ten Commandments and things. Although I'm not going to go there, but I don't think that's for all. Much of it is for us today, but that's really for a specific person, a group, Israel, but Jewish people. But anyway, so, you know, it's really rich, um, that thinking. But anyway, so what I'm trying to say philosophically, um, if, you, if you're going for the Bible, then you got to realize is God behind the Bible or would God want us to have communication from him so you start realizing some things about god for example i could go on and on just about this i will for a while um like if you realize that wait he created us we're creatures made you know, of course the bible says we're made in his image but let's say we don't know that but the fact is all us human beings have relationship even animals have a type of relationship you know so the all some animals you know so here we are uh, very, very strong. It's very important, isn't it? Family, friends, you know, work relations. So this is really important to us. Very important. Uh, where'd that come from? Where was it derived? Okay, evolution. And I'm sorry. I don't mean to be <laughs> attitude about it, but it's just it doesn't fit everything. It doesn't match everything. It doesn't fit where this one really does as answer design and all that the complexities. It shows there's a God. But anyway, so if there is a God. Uh, then he must be uh, really, it must be very important. It's very prioritized on us. And why would he create all these relationships? A person, if he is a person, or she is a person, whatever, creating persons without personal relationships. So the, 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 in my opinion, without the Bible, you start wondering, maybe he wants a relationship with us. I believe he did, and I think that's why he actually chose that method. Among others, it's not just written Bible stuff. He decided, I'm going to uh, really speak to man, and they're going to write it down, and etc. So we have prophets and spokesmen and seers and, and then apostles. And, and then he came especially in the last days speaking with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the last word. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spoken times past through prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son. And there's a lot of richness there and why he sent him there and all. So my suggestion is philosophically, I think God really wanted us to have a Bible. Now, if you say, well, if God wanted us to have a Bible, then the question is, has it changed over time? And if it did, then is he impotent? incompetent is he not able to keep a bible through people we so man is fallible we make mistakes you know scribes writing it down and maybe they had an agenda you know that was opposite of what god wanted well i think there's way too much evidence in many many different ways and i'm not going to go through each one unless i might i'll try but i think there's too much evidence that this god 
really did have enough wisdom to choose to do it this way. He really chose it. He was very good. To, he, he wanted to show his goodness. So he's a good God. So he wants to make sure that uh, we get the right thing and all that. You know, he's righteous and good and we're not going to be deceived. The third thing is I think he was, he's sovereign enough and powerful enough, has enough power to actually take his power and work through fallible man. Infallible to fallible. All philosophy, I guess. I think there's enough evidence later. Again, you have to, it's like, this is like a murder mystery or something. You know, you find someone dead and then you find, you have to figure out all the clues and who done it. <laughs> that type of thing. Or this goes to anything like um, we, it's clues, are there fingerprints, clues to someone stealing something or whatever, or detectives. And I think there's not just one clue, you put them all together and you go, aha, and you get the aha moment, God. The aha moment is God. And I believe that God has a, a, is wise enough to be able to figure out how to work through us, who's fallible. And then he's, ha, he's good enough to make sure that we get it right. And then the third one is that he's powerful, to make, powerful enough to make sure that we get it right. He, and also a good God wanting a relationship with us. So all that to put together. All right, let me go on. Now, I think universally everyone has to admit there's good people and bad people. Um, is, now, I think what happens when people approach the Bible, they come so skeptically um, that they want to believe, well, there's error, so they have this feeling that everybody makes errors. No, that's not true. Humans that make errors don't error all the time. And there's many times, even in your life, that you had no error in a test, you A or whatever. And what you say, and you, you did the right thing there, and there's a lot of good things. And, and you know, uh, there's, there's people don't always make mistakes all the time. So is it possible, I'm questioning, giving you a question, is it possible that there were good people who wrote the Bible instead of coming to him and saying, uh -huh, bad agenda and all that. How do you know that? I, I actually believe in innocent till proven guilty. I really believe that. Um, and I think that's wiser. It's foolish to do the other way, in my opinion. But at the same time, you don't want to be gullible. You don't want to take, you know, so, well, let's dig into this. And then you're, I think you'll find out that the more you dig, you'll find out these are really good people. Because how do you know that? Just read somebody's letter and you kind of get a feel for the personalities or whatever. Or that these, might have, these people actually might have wanted to share Jesus, for example, talking about the New Testament, uh, to the Mediterranean world. They really wanted to share about him. So is it possible that they did, oh, I want to get it right. They could have been Christians. Maybe not all of them were. Uh, but, you know, you could still copy, you know, things and do, do a good job on copying. You could still do a good job in your job because that's your job. Of course, I don't know exactly when the professional scribes came. Uh, there were people copying in the beginning. But we'll get into why the, I think there's too much evidence that we can actually trust the Bible later in the manuscripts themselves. Yeah, that's going to be really fun. But that's later. I call it the hard evidence. So this is soft evidence. So this is kind of thinking. I believe there's good people among uh, bad people, and I believe there can be good people there. Um, why would you? And by the way, that's with other religions too. Now, some religions they may have some real motives behind them, but I tend to go into religious other religions and say I believe they really are sincere people, and they're really good people trying to, you know, find the truth. The thing is, is it right? You can't have two religions that are contradictory each other, and they can't be, both be right. Either both are wrong. Or one of them is right and one of them is wrong. You can't, you know, they can't be both right, you know, if they're contradictory. All right, let's go on. Capable good stri scribes. I believe that uh, they're real, real good, capable good scribes. If you go into the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, definitely. Like uh, if you study, and maybe I'll do another thing on that. And I have, uh, you know, found out a lot of cool stuff about uh, the scribes there where, you know, they if they made so many mistakes, a few, they would bury it or burn it. You know, they would start all over. Every time they would uh, come to the name uh, Ye Jehovah, Yahweh, not Jehovah, but Yahweh, meaning mean the same German guys add, changed the name, not changed the name, put in that translation, same God, uh, that they would wash their hands. They, and I've also like really washed themselves. I don't know if a total bath every time they wrote it. I mean, they were very meticulous. And they would count every single letter of the um, document of the manuscript that they're they're copying from another one. They would count every letter of the one that they copied from, and they would copy every count every single letter 
that they copied of, and if there was a mistake, they had to try and go find it. Um, and if I think there were like three in, in a one book or something like that, I can't remember exactly what I read, but they would bury it, they'd start all over. And then they would actually find out what the middle letter was of the whole, the whole manuscript. It could be like 50 chapters in Genesis or something. And they would uh, find the middle letter and they would find the middle letter in that and they would see if that's the exact middle letter. You know, they would count in and count it. <laughs> Fantastic scribes. New Testament scribes, we'll go into New Testament primarily because that's what I have most knowledge about. But it's fantastic stuff. We'll get to that later. But I think there's capable, good scribes. Why? I mean, that's just why should they be all lousy and writing errors? Are there errors? Oh, yeah. We'll get into the errors and all, but it isn't near as bad as what people might think. Fitting to reality. Now, this is a philosophy that I really have found over time. Christianity and the Bible fits everything to perfect. It fits so perfectly to reality. So coherent. I'll give you a few because we'll just keep it tight. One is that it, the human uh, ex human beings that really identifies the truth of human beings, hearts, the nature. And it talks about good and evil. Like Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, parents really like their kids. But compared to God and his, and his expectations, his awesome standards of morality, kind of bad. And the Bible says no one's good, no, not one, and all that. So it really nails us. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You might say, well, that's offensive. You don't know yourself very well. We're very self-centered as a group. And I know it over time, and, and, and we're very, we go by our constitutional feelings, even compassionate people and philanthropists and all that. They, could, they go by their feelings. They're really living out of their own feelings. And it's, that's kind of selfish, isn't it? Self-centered. I mean, I'm not going to go into it too much. My point is, it's fitting to reality. Uh, it knows humans really well. The death and the atonement was absolutely necessary. This is what distinguishes this religion from the others really quickly. Uh, Jesus Christ died for us. And then who is this Jesus? Was he just a Jewish, you know, itinerant preacher? Some of the, uh, was he just a good man, a good moral teacher? There's plenty of those, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, uh, that's a Greek ones. I don't know, you know, many others. Um, really good teachers and all. Gandhi, you know, the real good moral teachers. But uh, there has to be a death. If I'm not going to go into it, but we'll go into another video or something. But it really fits. So I'm suggesting this Bible fits perfectly with us. So I believe in it, you know. Oh, and there's a resurrection. There needs to be a resurrection for hope and everything and for, you know, that life has afterlife and all that. That's not dream world, wanna be, you know, just wishful thinking. All right, uh, God made it difficult. Now, this is a philosophy that I really believe is true. Um, I think God, why, did, why, is it so, why is it so difficult? Why does, he, why does he choose faith? I'll go into it in, in more depth, but I'll just kind of skim across a little bit. It's not like I have way deep things on all this but to make it short i think god on purpose uh, allowed us to have what we have in the sense of um you know manuscripts and he made it challenging for us um he did it that way with with the errors and the manuscripts and everything why i think god is very selective now that sounds terrible he no the bible he says everybody wants everybody but there's also passages very clear that um, people who are hardened in their hearts and they're self-centered, they don't deserve heaven. Nobody does. I don't. I mean, nobody does. I know that. But there just happens to be some who want to really go after God and love him and really want him. And so that's why he spoke in parables, Jesus said, you know, to make it a little bit more hidden. And I have studied the Bible for a while and there's incredible, incredible diamonds rubies gold or whatever all through there and they were hidden under there and i didn't see them until i kept going after and it's like it's like hunting for treasure it's fantastic they were sitting there the whole time and i mean i can't tell you how fantastic they are the wisdom wisdom is a principal thing i'd rather have a bible i've said this recently and i've said it you know i'll say it again again, and again. i'd rather have a bible and nothing else and be totally homeless and have rice and water for the rest of my life than to have no Bible at all and have the richest man mansion in the world or whatever, be the richest person. Nah, doesn't do it. How can something materialistic and all satisfy the deep inside? 
See, you're more than just flesh. This is metaphysical, going beyond, you know, the atheist thinking and the natural science alone. I love science, natural science and all that's there, but it's more than that. Life is deeper, life is more than that. And uh, so it's a metaphysical, there's a spiritual part and that's where it is, boy. Ah! And I have a deep, deep, deep joy and I'm not loony. All right, so um, I think that's good. So, oh, what I was gonna say is he kind of made it difficult for us and I think that's it's challenging because he really wants you to go after it. He wants you to go after him. It's kind of like playing, this isn't exactly accurate, but it's pl like playing in a sense of parallel metaphor, hard to get. Because are you valuable enough for that? Do you, are you worthy of that? You know, I think women should be that way, hard to get, and guys should be that way. So you get the right one. You just fall for, fall for anyone, you know, or the, someone lower level, if I can say that for you. So I'm not arrogant. I don't, I'm not better than anybody else, uh, but I do have a desire for him. I desire truth. I desire to really, and I know there is a God now, but I experience and everything else but anyway and logic and but what i was going to say is that um i have a real desire to uh really know him and want him I feel honored for that very humbled and i would just encourage you to seek after him the scripture says seek me and you shall find me when you search for me with all of your heart 